And we're live. Itamar Blauer. Is that Blauer? Uh, is yeah, it German Blauer. or how? Blauer? It is German, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, can you say some words about yourself, Itamar? Is your uh, origin German? Oh, no, no, no. It's not German. Uh, I've got some roots are like Austrian in my family, mm -hmm. but. Uh, no, no German at all. I thought you wanted me to introduce myself in German for a sec. I was like, man, I oh, <laughs> don't oh, know how to help I, I, you. <laughs> too, yeah. <laughs> but no. Yeah, what do you do? Um, yeah, so I'm an SEO and video marketing consultant. Uh, I publish uh, lots of content on my website uh, and other places like YouTube as well. Um, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs> awesome. All right, so welcome to the next LRT site clinic. And for those of you who have never seen it, these are uh, websites that were given to us from, from clients, from interested people that wanted us, SEO experts, to look at their site, at their backlink profile, at their problems, for the obvious goal to improve their rankings, to get more traffic, more qualified traffic. And this is what Ida and I will be doing today and the first site here is the small bathroom ideas 101.com and yeah do we have some pain points for that one Itama? yeah so with this site uh, and it's nice actually that whoever submitted this site and uh, gave some pain points in advance um, so they said specifically that uh, they're having a problem because they want the site to become the, the kind of go-to website for small bathroom ideas. And the challenge that they're having is to find content ideas. Uh, and the only things that this person is finding are product ideas, which they've put on the website. Um, but to grow the site, they say they want or and they need more general, readable, shareable content, quite a mouthful. Um, yeah. But this site, I mean, this is uh, your standard Amazon affiliate site. It's it's the kind of site that, you know, right from the get-go, I, I can tell what they're doing here. Um, so I think it might just be easier if I share my screen uh, yeah. with the site up and then... Yeah, go I ahead. Can, uh, do, 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 one second. And right, and here we, we go. This switch. should be... Yeah, this should mm -hmm. be up. Um, so... Like I said, standard affiliate site, the, the initial problems that I see here, and I, I understand the pain points that you're mentioning, but I think there are bigger problems that we need to identify first and foremost. Um, when you have an affiliate site, the number one thing that you're meant to do is you're, you're meant to generate trust amongst people because you are essentially becoming uh, seen as a thought leader or an expert in that field. So for this instance, you want to be portraying yourself as an expert with uh, small bathroom ideas. Now, the problem I have is I don't know if it's just for me. Did you have images showing up here, Crystal? Uh, actually, In... these couple fronted images, they did load for me. Right. Um, okay. So, so so what that tells me initially is that there might be some issues with people either with certain uh, browsers or you know, there's certain times, maybe it's it's my fault, maybe I could have opened this up in incognito, which uh, let's actually do that really quick. That might be. Or you have some kind of a firewall block, uh, a pie hole, for example. Yeah, potentially. Sorts of things, yeah. yeah, because I've got, so it maybe depends on the, the plugins I've got or something like that, but let's just have a look at it from here. So, you know, right off the bat, do I get an idea as to, you know, who you are or why I should trust you? I mean, you know, you've kind of got you, you, this as well is something that I really dislike when it comes to affiliate sites, because you want to have some kind of human representation of any affiliate site, doesn't matter what niche it is, there needs to be someone, uh, it, it can be a persona, it doesn't have to be you, uh, but someone who's behind all this content. So when you've got all your posts by small bathroom admin, to me, that just looks very dodgy. I mean, maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm a bit too skeptical, but that's just no, no, that's no. just how I see it. Um, you have you know, this small booth, ba small bathroom admin. That's yeah. There's nobody with that name on this yeah. app. I can guarantee you. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Okay, so here we've got a different one. But even this, you know, Toby two six seven. Like, why? Why can't it just be a full name, like somebody's full name, like Toby Smith or whatever you want to call this person? I mean, yeah. this to me, it just looks like. You know the internet way back you know <laughs> ages ago yeah, right yeah um so so now when when uh, and just the final thing i say on this point about making it look human um uh, you know you want to have some kind of about page which you don't have here 
you need to give context as to who you are and why you know your stuff when it comes to bathroom ideas, small bathroom ideas, right? Um, but you know that's not uh, the kind of bulk of what you wanted to talk about, which is the the content that you've got here. Now, I'm no expert in small bathrooms, um, and I'm sure you know more than me. I hope, uh, but. When, when we look at the homepage, you've just got it as just all the content here. And somebody that lands on this homepage, you want to have an ability for them to not get a bit lost, I think, because there's so much content. And obviously, I can understand why you've done this. You've probably got uh, just the, the post there all uh, down the one page and you've got the, you know, the pagination here. So but this is just all going from your homepage. And I don't and what that might do is it might end up just duplicating some content for no reason because you've already got, for instance, these uh, categories. You've got these category pages here, and that's fine, right? I think that's absolutely fine. Um, now, when you're splitting your content, you've got the sinks here, you've got tubs. Um, I don't know what the search volume is for this kind of stuff, like, uh, well, you see cute tiny sinks. Now, is that something people search for? Cute tiny sinks? It, it might be. I mean, I've, I've never heard it of a cute be. tiny sink, but I think what's important, and this is something obviously I haven't looked at the search volume for, for something like this, but you need to make sure that your, your labeling content, especially when you've got category pages, um, and especially when it comes to the on-page stuff, it has to be things that are that people actually search for. So if that is the case, then fair enough, then, you know, keep it. Um, but then again, you know, let's take a look at a, a, so, okay. So you could optimize this better because you've just got cute, tiny sinks in. Why can't you say, especially for affiliate sites, this is something that all affiliate sites should, should do. And, and a lot of the good ones do is like, you got to have some kind of way to, to lure the, the reader into reading this content. Because if they don't read this content, you're not going to get commissions because they're not going to go onto this uh, post to begin with. So you've got an affiliate site there, and I mean, okay, sure, you've got some some tags here, and you don't, I don't know if you don't seem to be running any AdSense, whatever, unless that's that, but I haven't looked into it. Um, but you know, you want people to go onto these posts and actually read them. So the number one problem you've got is you've just got cute tiny sinks, and that's not really appealing. I mean, it might be. But I think in terms of finding it through search, if you want to get people to find this organically, you know, best cute tiny sinks um, in, in 2020. That's the kind of stuff you typically see in affiliate sites. Um, and I mean, sure, if we click through to the, oh, okay, interesting. So you've got the image here and I would have expected to go onto this post by clicking that image, which is interesting. That might be a problem for some people. Um, I know I know how badly people want to put in the affiliate links into all the content, but definitely if you're on a category page, I wouldn't have this image link uh, going directly to that uh, to that product on Amazon. I would have it going to the post, um, and then this is where you kind of introduce the topic, and this should be consistent. So everything I'm I'm saying now should be consistent for any post that you have. You need to introduce this topic. Um, you know, I see you've gone straight into the actual individual products, but there needs to be some kind of introduction as to why somebody might want acute tiny sinks, what the use cases are, what people can expect, um, maybe certain problems that people might find, uh, all sorts of these things that you, if you lay them out nicely, it will just further emphasize that you know what you're talking about and that the products that you are um, showing to people, it covers a lot of their pain points potentially, right? So, you know, you've got a bit of uh, a thing here about a description. You say, click when you say click for more info, you know, you're sending them just to, to, the, to the bloody product page. Yeah. And this is the other problem I have. Uh, and this is a bigger problem because I've clicked on that link, but it's gone to the US oh. version of yeah. Amazon. Now, there are two things you can do to fix this. You can either use uh, something like Genius Link, which will basically take all of the uh, marketplaces you were, and it will just basically generate um, a link that will redirect to wherever the person is. It'll redirect to their local or regional national uh, Amazon site. 
Um, or you can use Amazon One Link, which is Amazon's own thing and you need to set up manually. It takes a bit longer. Um, but this is a problem because if I'm in the UK and, and this is a problem that loads of affiliate sites have from, uh, especially if you're using English as the language, is that you might get traffic from a bunch of English speaking countries. You might get lots of traffic from the US, Canada, Australia, the UK, right? And these places have their own Amazon storefronts, right? So you need to definitely set this up to go directly to the, the person, whoever the person is, wherever they're located to go to that. Because I can't buy this because I don't live in America and I don't want to pay with dollars and this might not ship um, to mm -hmm. the UK. The other problem we've got just with this example is that this is currently unavailable. So when you have an affiliate site, as tedious as it might be, um, you need to make sure that the products are available. You need to go in every so often, maybe every month, just have a look into all the products, make sure that they're available. If they're not, you're going to have to change them, especially if they've been unavailable for a while, um, because that's a problem, because these are commissions that you're not getting. And if somebody clicks on this, sees it's unavailable, what are they going to do? They're going to close out this tab and they're going to close out of your website. Um, so that is really, really important, a really important thing to keep in mind. And so that's that's from the, the product aspect, right? So there's a few things there that you definitely need to fix that are critical for the affiliate site. This isn't even, you know, for the SEO benefit. This is just yeah. for the whole benefit of why you've got the site in the first place, right? Yeah. So when we look past that and we look at this post in particular, it just doesn't look too appealing because it just looked like you've slapped it on there You've you've got the title of this product. Is it the same exact title? Yeah, Probably. yeah, it's a data um, feed site. I would call it. It's yeah, a, a exact copy of what is there on Amazon. So if you if you take some some of that content and Google it, you're probably hitting on the Amazon product page with the exact same. Yeah, because I was looking for the, the the description, like you're mentioning, from the words that were used underneath. But copying this exact title is not a great idea, um, and also it's it's the lack of call to actions. Because click for more info, I think, is a terrible call to action for an affiliate <laughs> site. Um, Nobody needs more info. They want a solution or a yeah, they, yeah. They 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 want the info on this page. Anyway, yeah. that's why yeah. they're on this page, supposedly, right? Yeah, um, yeah so, exactly. You know, if you're not giving them more info, uh, then you're just, you know, what's the point? Um, so, and just looking, like thinking back at the pain points where it was the, the content side and thinking of more content. Um, I would say before you start thinking of more content, because if you do, you're going to end up probably duplicating this for, for new types of products, which I think is the wrong approach. So, you know, with this kind of stuff, you really have to prioritize what the issues are. Um, and I haven't looked into this backlink profile of the site, uh, and I've not done any of that. I've not checked if it's mobile friendly. I've not checked how fast it is. And the reason why I, I'm spending so long talking about this, and please, Christoph, like, cut me off when I need to kind of <laughs> yeah, move on, yeah. um, is because this is the absolute fundamentals of an affiliate website. Because if you get this wrong, it doesn't matter how your site ranks. It's just not going to get the conversions, and you're yeah. not going to get the commissions. Um, and I think you you not even uh, even if you win some rankings, you're gonna lose them if people pounce back on on unavailable items or uh, maybe if I can share my screen now, what I yeah. notice is if I get to the home page and besides you know these weird names and all these ads here for Amazon, and by the way, for me, I see a sneaky ad blocks here from from AdSense. And more mm -hmm. AdSense down there that talks about um, online Kunstgalerie, about uh, artwork, art galleries, which is totally not related. But my, my concern starts with this first post here about the sm small freestanding tubs or the best rainfall shower systems. Frankly, if I'm into if I have the problem that I have a small bathroom and I want ideas how to model that, I don't want this huge best rainfall shower systems. And certainly I don't want this double vanity thing because I get frustrated. I, 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 I you know, my tears start, 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 start coming when I look at this and I realize, oh man, this looks so great, but I can't put it into my bathroom. This is terrible. It's, it's not 
it's not talking to me, uh, assuming that you want to talk to people with small bathrooms. Uh, but this is where it starts, where I'm already annoyed but from scrolling down as, as, as the pe person having a small bathroom. Oh, yeah. And here I, I look at this ad. What is this? Oh, yeah, the art gallery ad. So I look at this huge, spacious uh, uh, living room. Whatever this ad earns you, it, you lose the, the interest that by the interested person visiting your site and then this what, what's that uh, 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 what aqua uh, amazing aquatica fusion rondo spa chatted outdoor you you need you need a huge house for that i don't have a huge house i have a small bathroom this is oh yeah l l let's give me some more art gallery ads <laughs> and 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 everything else aside this is a problem in link building as well you know, with all money of the world, you can buy some links from some people who will, you know, give you a link anyways, whatever your website is. But someone who's, you know, thinking about where to link to and that he gets himself into trouble for links that don't have a good story. He looks at this site and will realize it's not a quality site. It's not it's not what it promises. And uh, I think we see that also in the backlink profile when I, mm -hmm. when I switch to that one. Uh, look at that. When we when we have a domain overview, you, you have a problem to begin with. Uh, everything about the thousand detox risk means you have some kind of penalty or filter, algorithmic maybe. But the amount of bad links that we have here is holding you back. It's uh, maybe in your search console we don't have that connected. You already see a Google manual action, uh, but more likely at least some of those. Uh, posts that you have links to might not be ranking just because they have toxic links. And what we see here, we we got that site in June, back in June, obviously uh, from from this uh, history here. And your risk is growing over time. And this is an indicator that you are have been around for a while and are at least in 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 some areas of collateral damage of of scraper sites or maybe even a negative SEO attack. But I don't see any of these indicators here talking about a negative SEO attack. There are some signals that we generate when we see typical patterns uh, for, for well-known negative SEO tricks, so to say. Um, in your case, this is you know just with the 20 links here. I would just get rid of them. Uh, but those 20 links out of the hundreds won't make or break it. Um, when we look at the keywords, though, um, by distribution, by the number of links, just we're not even talking about quality, just the number of links. The breakdown here tells me that this is an unnatural backlink profile. You have the most popular anchor text saying best colors for small bathrooms, small bathroom ideas 101. And the second most popular is small freestanding tub. A look at this. Uh, this is not. Typically, a website ranks for its brand name, which would be Small Bathroom Ideas 101, or the HTTP Small Bathroom Ideas. Um, we see that here as well, sorted by uh, total detox risk. All of these links are marked in red. And only a Lukas Ratswohl, one name, which is maybe a person commenting somewhere. Oh, and that's a 404 link by now, or at the moment. Uh, three weeks ago when we did that crawl um that's the only link in that profile or when we look at the link profile the histogram here you see detox risk 50 percent of your links have a very high risk i uh, have a high risk yeah, in absolute numbers that's 285. if we look at the pages that you have links on just looking at the strength, which is the power, and the trust, which is the distance to a trusted seed source. 92.9% of your backlinks can be disavowed immediately. None of these links will be any help of, for you. And you know, just looking at some of these domain names, uh, look at these 289 domains. These are some, some list sites, directory sites. Um, it's questionable if you earn these links from a competitor, say a negative SEO attack, and someone bought these links for you, or you maybe did hire some agency in the past who, who 
gave you these links, but uh, the super list US or, or any of these are really uh, not, not quality sites linking to you. Joe Ant is a, is a paid link directory that was popular 2005 or so, I think. And with that being said, whatever these domains, the links that you have from them, the 560 all have a power and a trust of zero. So they're not helping you in terms of link strength, and they're certainly not helping you in trust. And um, if we change this filter to say greater than zero here, source page power trust, we only have very few links left that are actually good for you, that are helping you. <laughs> These are um, what 21 anchor texts with uh, 43 links. Here we go. That's not a lot. And some of them still trip the risk filter. So when we say the detox risk of these here is, um, let's say, greater than um, greater than 1000. You know, 1000 is, is roughly always the border. Oh, no, sorry, less than 1000 less than 1,000, that should remain, give us the remaining good links, 26 links. So this is what we can work with. We can safely disavow the rest or take into account that this is what we have in terms of links that help you. The other ones in the past did not help you, now would rather hurt you. And I think that's the reality. Um, these links, uh, very similar to the content that they are below any quality standards. And I think your problem that you described is, is spot on. You need, um, I think it, it's, it's that shareable content, right? Or something shareable or, mm -hmm. yeah, shareable was one of the general things. readable, shareable content. Yeah, totally. Um, and without that, you won't have people on the site engaging with the site, consuming it when 20 of the best small bathroom ideas. Uh, no, that's not a small, is that a small bathroom uh, in your? I mean, that's definitely bigger than my, my <laughs> bathroom, but I mean. Uh, <laughs> You're in London, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I guess that makes sense, but. <laughs> <laughs> I think in London, you have apartments that size, you know, of. of, of <laughs> Probably, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. yeah, but. You know, just look at the imagery. These are not small bathrooms. I mean, maybe for US standards. Yeah. What's mm. the audience here? It's, US, I think it's predominantly, it's predominantly US. Like I yeah. saw they were ranking for the predominant uh, like keyword rankings they've got is for the US. But what, what's surprising, and and I'll echo the point that you made earlier, is something about, you know, angering the potential visitors because they're not going to want to, you know, read your content. If they look at the image and think, well, that's a big bathroom, they'll click off it because they'll think, well, that's not the right fit for me. I'm right um, here, especially, yeah. you know, when the domain itself is small bathroom ideas. So you can't really, you know, it's just a bit ironic, I would say. It's, yeah. it's a tiny yeah. for somebody to look for small bathroom ideas and find <laughs> images of big bathrooms. I mean, like that. Like, there's no way... You know, I, I no. Mean, there's no way I would call they're, that. They're beautiful. They're beautiful. Uh, I, I love them, but uh, no, not yeah. the small bathrooms. And, <laughs> and the, the other thing as well is, is which I found quite, quite surprising, is that you know this site is ranking for a lot of keywords, um, and keywords with thousands of search volumes, like uh, the the post they have about um, a bathroom corner uh, vanities, for instance. Corner Vanity in the US has almost 6,000 search volume and they rank number one for this. You know, they rank wow. quite well for a lot of keywords with a lot of search volume. And what mm -hmm. that indicates to me is either there's absolutely no competition um, for, for this kind of niche and it might be one of those niches that are really good. Um, but then again, the problem I have is that for, like the, the longer you wait, your site's just going to get pushed down more and more on the SERP. And that's something that I'm predicting because, um, because of the, the things that we were talking about. And also, uh, and we're referencing the backlink profile as well. There's a, a domain that's linking to this website 40,000 times. 
um, where all the other ones are quite, you know, it's not as bad. I mean, the, from yeah. what I saw, the site has like 42,000 links um, from about 260 referring domains um, mm -hmm. from where I checked. But, you know, if you've got a site linking to you 40,000 times, just disavow it. You don't need it. It's not going to help you as well as the things that you were mentioning, Christoph, all of these yeah. uh, links that you pointed out that um, are helping. You keep them and you can just disavow the rest and try and before you start building links, you've got to work on your content. You know, the, the whole SEO thing, it's a it's a kind of, you work on it in stages, right? You make sure that it, the site is technically sound, so there are no problems technically. Then you work on the content on the website. Only after you've worked on that, then you focus on links. So I would say disavow the links now um, that you need to disavow and start working on the content because there is so much you can do um to do and it just to me like knowing how affiliate sites look it just looks like uh just a and and, and gail actually mentioned this on facebook yeah he said, yeah he said it's lazy and to me i i would have to agree with gail um yeah. lazy stock design i mean yeah it kind of just looks like your traditional template for a blog um the logo itself i don't really know what that low like the blue thing is um it looks the, like a trash can to me, but I think it should be a small, a small sink. Ah, oh, it looks like a like a oh, corner right. sink. Right, right, yeah. Because I thought it was either a trash uh, can, like a blue trash can, or like an oven, kind of just a weird <laughs> oven. Okay, okay, yeah. Or maybe because it's got like the the drawer at the top, maybe, and it's just got. I, I have no idea. I mean, but this is another thing. I mean, I, I would get, you know, go on somewhere like Fiverr, just pay someone a bit of money to get you a better logo. Um, yeah. and, and, yeah, you know, you need to make the site look more human, like, right. So, yeah. And, and order one of these small jacuzzis here for, uh, Itamar's small bathroom in London. Right. I, I would love to know how, you know, how well this site does in terms of Amazon commissions, uh, because yeah. especially because that you see that example there unavailable, that's unavailable. unavailable. I mean, check your products, man. Like you have an affiliate site, like the bulk of your money is not going to come from AdSense. And and yeah. it's the point that Christoph mentioned earlier. It's like, if you've got the AdSense ads coming up with stuff that's irrelevant um, and someone clicks off, you know, how much money are you going to get from somebody looking at that AdSense ad? You're going to get absolutely nothing. And compare that to, you know, how, how much do these small bathrooms actually cost? Like what, what actually is the, the, you know, let's say average price for one of these products? Because if it's somewhere, you know, in the hut, which it must be, right? It can't be cheap. There's no way. It's yeah, yeah. Be. These these type of uh, bathtubs uh, that the like world almost a thousand dollars, and I mean, come on, like there's, you know, AdSense. I I would just remove the AdSense because if you're able to to get a sale. On these, let's say the the margins you've got for this type of product is five percent. You know, that's if even with five percent, you're still getting a lot of money just from one sale, right? Yeah. So, yeah. come on. I mean, that's like well, let's say you'd get what fifty dollars per sale, yeah. and you rank yeah. well. I mean, just fix the content, just make it look yeah. nicer, and just remove the absence. Make it useful. Let's yeah. make it useful. Right now, it doesn't seem to be useful for someone with a small bathroom because of these things. And therefore, I'm, I'm sorry to say that it doesn't serve to rank. And I'm certainly not into a home office uh, hero chair now. <laughs> the, Google does a bad job picking the ads here as well. It does. Um, it does. Oh, yeah. And this thing here? Uh, come on, 10, 10K? <laughs> I don't know. But the... Uh, could be maybe it was picked based on the on the on the product price you know to to maximize the commissions but then you oh, need to have a, a huge bathroom ideas.com or something like that that that's that's how the content actually looks like and then i would actually go and you know just write one post where you assemble this and this and this product because right now it looks like a copy of some categories from mm -hmm. Amazon. you know have a sink here have a mirror there have some small stuff why should I use your site if I can pick from the catalog right on Amazon? There's no, it's more a cookie cutter approach right now. And I think this is what you need to try to make this worthwhile for a reader. To read. I, I would, uh, do, do you know what, Christoph? I would say 
as because we've covered a lot on the site already and i yeah, think yeah. An, one thing that i would suggest as well is do you really need to rely on just amazon as your commission partner for this type of website because if someone's looking to to get a bathroom like i've never gone on amazon when i needed a new like toilet yeah. or a new sink um you know you've got specialist sites for that right so huge luxury brands for small bathrooms actually not the stuff on um uh... On Amazon. Yeah, I think you know you might be able to find better suitable partners that actually give you more commission because sure people trust Amazon, but for this type of products, right? For these types of products about bathroom ideas with sinks and all that kind of stuff, is that something that somebody's gonna trust Amazon to deliver you, or are they gonna prefer to look for something more specialized, like specialists in bathrooms, these types of either manufacturers or or types of uh, shops that that actually specialize in the stuff. I'm just curious because I don't know if you're you're just going for Amazon just because it's easy, and I can understand that, and that's why most people who do affiliate marketing with their sites go for Amazon because it is really simple. Um, but you know, there's definitely more digging you can do. I feel like there's a there's a much more thorough thought process that you could have um, in order to really maximize the efficiency of the site. And I only say that because the site ranks well and that's what baffles me at the point at, at this moment in time so you know and that can change like don't you know you yeah. might be ranking well today tomorrow you might get off uh, off page one that's something that the algorithms can do to you so just keep that in mind uh, but you know definitely focus on content i would say just spend a bit more time um because that's it you know affiliate sites take time and uh, like Gail summed it up nicely by just saying that you know he thought it was just a bit lazy, um, which which I can concur. Um, but uh, yeah. All right. So let's go to the next site then. Uh, we have our randomizer here again. I just pasted in the whole thing, and the first site that we see here that the art the artgrandstrand.org. Arts. Grand, uh, oh, the arts, grand, oh, the arts grand strand. Grand. Well, that's Charlie, uh, we, we, saw, we just saw art gallery ads. Is this one of the art galleries that? Oh, uh, that's uh, <laughs> that's spooky stuff, man. It's the, I mean, Halloween's gone. Oh, that, that, oh yeah. Oh wait, this this looks familiar. Uh, did we look at this site? No. Um, uh, I I haven't seen this site, but it'll be interesting to, you know what? Because I I don't really know nothing about the art, so this is quite interesting. Yeah. Let's uh, let's dive into this. I can share my screen again. Yeah, you share your screen my... again. Now we see some risk in the backlink profile, but it's uh just two hundred twenty four source root domains. So let's right. look inside first. What's going on here? Okay. And for a newsletter sample. Newsletter sample. Hmm, that's what newsletter sample is that a sample before you send? Okay, I mean, <laughs> ah, interesting. Okay. Get a, I, I kind of get it. It's a taster, get an idea of our uh, that, that's unique. I have not seen a, a newsletter sample before on a site. I quite like that. Uh, I don't know how I feel about where it's placed because I mean, you've got the yeah, your logo at top left, that's fine, but there's no real navigation here. Um, calendar and events for me doesn't work. It's not a clickable mm -hmm. element. Nothing shows up. Um, and you've got the random Facebook and meetup, and then you've got the sample there. But mm -hmm. let's have a look. So you've got a bunch of different, uh, this looks like events for different art stuff. I mean, sure, that people are into that. Art is a popular thing um but let's see so we've got yeah i could th this site probably has a lot of urls what i would say i mean i so this is the one thing i like this kind of niche um in terms of what you want to get out of the site like the goal for the site i presume is to get people to just find different events mm -hmm. and maybe be able to purchase tickets because okay. i mean let's so this is all november 5th so i don't know if you can buy tickets here directly or you so you've got the event website so it's just like kind of like an aggregator in some way where you just show people a bunch of different upcoming events 
um, and uh, you know we will be here till the end of time because there's loads of events uh, as as we can see here. But I think, and this is the interesting thing is because you, you got to think, what do I try and do organically for this kind of site? Because if we just look at the like the URLs here as well, these aren't optimized. It's just you've got the events and the instances as uh, you know, just uh, just t uh, numbers. So there's no actual content there for the search engines to work with when they're scrolling. The about us section is absolutely tiny. This this font size that you've got is way too small, uh, I think. And and this is a okay, right? So this is a problem with your newsletter because you're asking people to sign up to the newsletter by sending your email address to this email. That you know, just get some kind of easy uh, like subscribe form use MailChimp, use whatever you want to do. Um, this link to the meetup isn't clickable. Um, you know, this, these are just some some nitpicking some UX stuff that might be important to some people. You know, some people might not, you know, join your meetup thing just because they didn't or couldn't be bothered to, to kind of click on yeah. the, the non-clickable link. And that's definitely something that people do. Like, I think you need to always, always keep that in mind. Um, but let me just do a quick and after slide. four years i think it's time to update the copyright notice it says copyright 2016 and that screams ah. to me outdated or or not not up anymore you know someone abandoned this site this is a small little thing that a lot of people pay attention to yeah um, very good point um yeah th this site it's got a thousand just over a thousand urls i'm just trying to see where people can get to and and just none of this is optimized and i mean just looking at this this is you know there's not much on here to to kind of work with organically i mean the the urls shouldn't be just these numbers yeah they shouldn't yeah. be they need to have some some context to them um so you know even if you're you know event slash ccu dash music dash duo dash piano dash concert that's going to be much better than just having yeah. numbers here because how are people really going to be finding this if they're looking for like a duo piano concert right on february uh, 2016 how did you get yeah there? i mean the, well we'll have to get a time machine to go back to that event but i mean and this is the other thing as well for past events are these things that you necessarily want indexed is that something that you no. know do you, do you necessarily want search engines to find this stuff because it's it's gone it's in the past it's not going to happen again yeah. um so and every user who clicks there is going to be annoyed oh my i missed it that's not yeah if, yeah, yeah yeah it's not helping the user it's frustrating if they find it they'll be like okay this is great because i mean if we look at the way that these results are displayed you know we've got okay ccu music da, da, da. okay that looks great oh but then yeah well you actually see the date here um, but it's just people won't click on this if they notice that or if they don't notice that straight away and that they just because some people remind remember some people just read the the title tags yeah. Yeah. of these results they might go oh cool i want to go to do a piano concert and they're like oh i'm, I'm four years late <laughs> so you know no, that's not, it, that's not that's nice. something else that i would say so consider definitely checking the the content that you've got on this site, especially what's indexed, because do you really need most of it indexed? I would say probably not. Um, I'm just going to, I'm really curious. I'm just going to pop into Ahrefs and, and take a look at mm -hmm. this site's backlink profile, just because, I mean, okay, 66 referring domains, but 4,000 links. So you've probably got some people linking to you a thousand times, which, yeah. So visit my Myrtle Beach. Oh, I don't know where that is, yeah. but. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's relevant at all. Um, so, you know, that get rid of that. Also, some other ones, you know, 83, 38, things that just don't look natural. Maybe this might be natural because this is related to music. So it could have been uh, relevant. But, I mean, you've got you've got a th over a thousand organic keywords, mainly in the US, um, where, you know, okay, it's not, not bad. Not as bad as I would have thought, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. I mean, mid-page one for like Grand Strand events with uh, some mm -hmm. decent search volumes, that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. But I think the, the problem that you've got is that Google is going to have a hard time trying to rank the other types of pages, especially if it's like the event pages themselves, just because the, the, probably the easiest uh, way for search engines to, uh, to send people to your site would just be through your homepage. And sometimes that's okay. 
I think for this particular type of site, that might be okay, uh, provided that the way for people to search here is uh, up to scratch. So you've got different categories and I like how you've color coded this kind of. Um, so if I click on art and if I click on author, okay, so it shows them both. Can I unclick it? I can. You've got tags here. So you know this is quite a lot of tags. Could there you potentially have some search feature here as well so you don't have to scroll for all this stuff? No, because let's say, okay, so I've clicked on that and now okay, the, this has gone a bit weird and I can't. Can I go back? Metal beach. Oh, if I go back, I already go to a different URL. You see, so this oh. is the other problem that you've got. You've got to think, you've got to try this stuff out, test it for yourself, because you know, what if somebody clicks on something by accident and then they've lost all of the categories that they selected? So they have to go back and select art again, select this again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, will this happen? Okay, so venues is fine. I think it's the tags that show up weirdly. So if I click on a tag like art. That's gonna. Uh, oh, interesting. So for some reason now it's okay, but before it just looked weird. And I think maybe that it's just the frame kind of just going out. Is there something underneath the this mm -hmm. one? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe there is. Yeah, maybe there is. Like some CSS issues. But I read something even more frustrating. I'm on an event site for uh, for Model Beach, and you, you you did some work. You're selecting this and that and that, and I just said no events found. This is the most basic error message you mm -hmm. get from a database query. So you have all these different uh, classifications and a user who has a very um, um, clear indication of what he wants and selects all of that. And then you just say, no events found, bad luck. Mm -hmm. And that is means slapping the door in front of the customer and saying, goodbye, we cannot help you, go. go. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I if they, if but if they had like a in numbers, if they had it next to where you can select, if they at least had like a bracket zero bracket, then people would know at least not to click on it. Um, yeah. So yeah. again, this kind of site, you have to think of the UX because yeah. there's no point optimizing a site like this if people get on the site and they get frustrated or they they end up finding events they want to go to that have expired already from four years ago. Um, and I don't know. You know, how, like how actively are you updating these web events? You've obviously got some upcoming ones, sure, but you know, Christoph, you've mentioned the footer as well, being from what is it, 2016? Mm -hmm. It's all these kind of things that just give a negative impression um, on people, yeah. and they will. And I'm telling you this because people are so savvy nowadays when it comes to when they're searching. If somebody feels like something's off, they're just going to leave the site, go somewhere else. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that you really need to keep in mind and ux is becoming very important um and then the other things as well just how you structure your content because it, there is no structure that's the bottom line there is no structure you've just got you know forward slash you know uh, event equals you know one two 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 five it's just but what does that mean that's not something that search engines can understand it's not something that users can understand um okay. so that's the other thing that you need to please users and the search engines and at the moment quite frankly I think you're doing neither, uh, which is the biggest issue that we have. So I think with the, you know, let's get, let's if we just talk about homepage, you know, you need to have a way for people to be able to search for the events in a in a way that provides them with a good user experience. Doesn't matter. Let's forget about all the other pieces of content you've got. The the probably most of the indexed URLs that you might want to no index, but you know, from the get go, people are going to land on your homepage. Um, so you need to make sure that your homepage is up to scratch for people to even want to stick around or, or go onto your site again. Um, and also the things like the, the clickable in the footer, the clickable thing to join the thing. And, you know, to, to ask someone to send you their email to sign up to their newsletter is just beyond me. That's just... Mm -hmm. Like, did people even do that back in the day? Like, I don't. Even, I've never heard of that before. No, no, it's been around uh, twenty years ago. You could, you could send emails to these newsletter um, um, servers, right? Oh, so, right. A, a typical newsletter server, uh, the original ones worked like that, where you had a special email address, you you mail there, and you get back an email, and then. I think you had to click or or email again, and then you had another mm. email to unsubscribe and. But that's that's really ancient. That's that's museum 
uh, technology and nobody's using that. <laughs> Do you know why I find that funny? Because when you said, obviously, it's an art site. And when I looked at it at the get go, I was like, you know, this site reminds me of a kind of museum. Um, <laughs> and I don't really mean that in such a harsh way. Mm -hmm. But I think, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to stuff like the newsletter, yeah, the, that, that's an ancient practice. You, you know, yeah. there's plenty of ways and you can look online for, for being able to, to set up new you know newsletters and different yeah. things with your email marketing. Um, but you know, that's stuff that you just have to do because it just looks old. I feel like I've I've kind of just gone back in time um, yeah, looking yeah. at, at these kinds uh, of Nobody's things. gonna find it. I mean, except us, nobody's gonna scroll all the way down to read this little, uh, super little font in, 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 in a courier font or whatever that is, Times New Roman, to find your email address here, to send you an email. And it's not even clickable. So no. It's not gonna happen. Nobody's gonna copy and paste this on an iPhone, for example. Um, the other thing is uh, this: uh, everything you mentioned, uh, I, I can just agree with. I I see that this actually a calendar script from a product called Timely. You know, here we got. I'm not sure if you can read this. A little link, a little promotion link, where you can then go to. Oh. Uh, wait, that opens a frame with that calendar, event calendar product, a SaaS product that helps you build sites like that. All right, <laughs> and they probably have a free plan. And what I can just say is that that means um, you either need an upgrade or configure that different, or maybe use another type of calendar. But it looks like this calendar functionality is limited, but whatever that product can do. Um, and that's not a lot for 2020, because when I use this right structured data helper here, I see that you only have a schema markup for the website itself. All of these events could be schema markup. Mm -hmm. And if you have a product, that you pay for to build that calendar functionality, you either need to flip a switch to enable that, or you need to change it to another product that you know does provide some schema markup, at least for the search engines. However, if you then have someone coming to this site and you click on tickets, no ticketing info, on organizer, no organizer info, on venue, no venue info, no, no. It's no purpose. For me as a searcher, I come here and I'm frustrated and I'm leaving right here. I mean, maybe here already. Oh, no, you can't get tickets here. That, that, that's it. You're done. And mm -hmm. all of these other things, calendar tags and uh, the heart and the subscribe, who needs all that stuff? It's, this information here is what, why I'm going to the site. I see there is an event. It looks interesting to me, but I have... No information whatsoever, about, except the time that, what does that even mean? The recycle errors here. Uh, that could mean that it's a recurring event that happens on October 1, 8, October 15. This is the important information and it's hidden here on the mouse over. When I, when I mouse over this little icon, I see six dates. Six? Yeah. Where that probably takes place. Uh, you need to put some work into the editorial work of what this site provides. And then I guess um, it will make users happy. And if it makes the users happy, it will make uh, search engines happy. What we see here in the source domains, you already uh, mentioned that visit Myrtle Beach. I, I guess that's a local link with uh, actually a high trust value. So I would keep that one. There's a lot of links. Uh, that look a little bit weird. The typical spam that we have. Let's see if we have wallpaper spam for an art site. Yes, we have some wallpaper spam, but that's not uh, a concern. Something that every site that has been around for a couple, uh, let's say one, two years is the dots. Yeah, If you have anchors that just equal dots, that's the typical scraper spam where we can say, yeah, if you just look at the URL structure of these linking websites, you see that they're all trash. So we can disavow this uh, pattern here with one click. Uh, there was uh, no 57 domains to clean up. And uh, with a total of uh, 200 and 
what's that? A 224 lengths. Uh, keep in mind when uh, Itamar showed you the data in Ahrefs, I think they're already, already cleaning out some or, or not crawling every trash site. While when we do the, the link auditing, of course, we need to crawl every trash domain to show you that there is some trash domain linking to you, right? So that explains the huge difference here, which is uh, actually really huge, 60 to 20, 224. Um, mm -hmm. a, I, I, I don't see, wait, did I see some negative? Okay, a little bit of the negative SEO pattern. You know, 22 is not a huge number here. Keep in mind, there are some automated negative SEO bots uh, that go to whole verticals. So to attack multiple sites, not just yours, it's nothing personal. It's just someone trying to get an advantage and you could be essentially victim uh, in, in terms of collateral damage of that pattern. It's not uh, a scary it's just something that could build up over time, as we've seen with the previous side as well, that you should um, be aware of and uh, potentially take care of on a regular basis to go down uh, below a thousand in risk. When we look at some of those target pages, I wanted to see some of them, the coastal Bohemian, that's a one more popular target page with 25 external links. Ah, yeah. What's that? That has 25 links. Michelle, Michael, Coastal Bohemian, Myrtle Beach, classes and workshops. They have classes in chalk painting. And here's a link to their Facebook events. Mm. That's a lot of boilerplate for sharing a link to a Facebook event that <laughs> is uh, has not taken place since the start of the pandemic, which, you know, I can understand as a problem for a event business in general or, or the art, arts business. But then what's the point of this page? This page should be taken down and redirected to some, um, yeah, to some category, which is what Itamar mentioned. There's no, um, there could be a category oh. workshops. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's just tough based on the, the structure that they have, I yeah. think. So it's like, where do you even redirect yeah. it? The yeah. most logical yeah. thing at this point in time would just be to redirect it to the homepage because that's the only surefire thing that you you know is is correct. I mean, you're not going to be able yeah. to, to sift through and find, you know, ID 25645, you know? It's yeah. like yeah. Exactly. But that brings the problem that redirecting everything to the homepage means that you're risking that all these redirected links are uh, interpreted as soft 404s. So redirecting to the homepage is the last resort if I don't have anything else to offer. And in March 2013 with Penguin 2.0, oh no, May 2013, uh, that change happened that um, the redirects were interpreted as soft 404s. That's a long time ago. And I recently, like recently, like last couple of months, uh, tried to get some information out of um, John Miller about this specific um, behavior. And uh, he wouldn't reply to me on that one. Because, <laughs> you know, it makes sense from a U UX perspective in, in, in only the worst cases. Uh, from an SEO perspective, I would still stick with the recommendation to have at least a sub page. And this one could say something like, um, this is, uh, uh, you know, for a past event or, or the, the, the event that you were looking for um, is over, but you may like this or this mm -hmm. or this, or sign up for our newsletter here. And then a huge box where I can type in my email address, because that's what you're after. You're after my email address. And, um, this is what you could do there and just use it as a lead chain. Uh, everything is better than this here. Nobody's going to comment here. And if they do, what are you going to do with it? Uh, so, no. yeah. And um, I have a hard time thinking about uh, a link building strategy for that type of site. You know, we have uh, a lot of, um, I would say, random links. I mean, okay, the, the visitor center. Of that, is that this the Myrtle Beach, South Carolina? Is that a city? Yeah. Okay. So if you link there in the, in the to do section or so, that's fine. Um, but 
why not write about what to do? Like, this is where you could start. When I go to the yardsgrandstrand.org, uh, you could tell me that, um, yeah, well, what's with this slider? You know, we have this in every show, every time, every site clinic don't use sliders. Not only are they terrible from UX, but as you can see here, uh, the first thing I read is your home, 5 p.m. Yeah. What, what does that even mean? What do you mean by your home? And then down here, something is cut off. I cannot even read this. Uh, ah, look, different <laughs> font sizes reveal a Latin America film. Totally, super interesting. Okay, where do I sign up? Take my money. Tickets? No. Ah, <laughs> this is the, ah, you were, you've been there before. The event website, is that? Ah, Coastal Carolina University has, um, what did I want to see? Let me see again. Where, where have I been? You lost me already. This was about <laughs> a film. <laughs> oh no, this was about a film on October 6th and we have November 5th. Don't do that. Uh, I think, it, do you know what? I think this, it might be a case of the things that we were talking about earlier in terms of the calendar. It could just be a site that's like, okay, we've used this for so many years. We don't want to switch it. It might be like yeah. the only thing they know. So, you know, I understand that from some ways, but from an SEO angle and from a UX angle, it will be a lot better if you had that updated. Um, and I think in terms of th just thinking out loud about a link building strategy, yeah, the best bet would probably be to have some form of navigation to start off with, because it means that because you don't really want to get links to event pages that then just expire. And then it's yeah. like, well, what's the point of that particular page ranking if the events expired and no one's going to do anything yeah. about it? So consider having maybe better, just better navigation from your site in terms of getting some even if it's categories, even if you you know splitting them up into uh, potentially guides, if you're just talking about say that beach, you can have uh, guides for like events to best events uh, during the the summertime for for this beach, or you know in the in the autumn could be a seasonal thing if there are certain events that you know run seasonally, um, and it's just that way you can have at least more content on the site as well, because any page that we've kind of seen, there's really not much to it, um, especially when you're clicking at events, because it's just uh, quite a lot of the standard information, but you don't really give yourself opportunities to rank for certain keywords that people might actually be looking for. If they're looking at certain events for this beach in the summer, why not have a, a post on your website that talks about this kind of stuff? Yeah. Exactly. And I think this is where we end up with a product here, the Timely again. Uh, we're not promoting this product, actually, because from an SEO standpoint, standpoint, the way it's set up here, it's terrible for me. Because what I just found Googling for some content that you have in here is the events.time.ly uh, website. That calendar website is ranking for your content. And mm -hmm. When I click here, okay, I still get this calendar text. I, I have I have the detailed page of that frame here, but none of your brand, the Arts Grand Strand or so is mentioned here, right? So if someone hits on that page from Google, they don't even connect this information to your website. You don't you don't own this visitor. So that means, um, yeah, it's just another reason to not link to this, uh, to these type of event entries. And um, yeah, just looking at uh, the source code, the frame source code. So this is all part of this calendar tool, which is, you know, if, if this is what you have, uh, just keep it and start maintaining it so that there is some, maybe some more useful information in here for people who want to buy or, or, or visit there and uh, you know what type of what type of URLs are then actually indexed did you did we do a site command for this uh, yeah I did that earlier I had like a thousand just over oh yeah oh yeah interviews from local artists um, 
events archive. The interview one sounds quite interesting. Oh, look, here's an archive, a, a category event. Yeah, but why can't people see this stuff? That's that's what I don't understand. Like, yeah, there's, no, yeah, yeah. there's no user is going to do a site search on your site. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like if they're going to find you from organic, that you got yeah. you got to have a, a gateway for them uh, to reach you. And I think even with these interviews, could just make it into a transcript, have like a whole page dedicated to it, because it's, because that way you can even rank for these particular people who are being interviewed. You know, you can yeah. have that in your titles. You can optimize it for for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I think as as well the point where you think of the the content that's on this site, and this is why it's especially important to create more content. Um, especially with the thing I mentioned, uh, examples about what to do in that beach in the summertime or whatever, because as we saw, that other product thing is is basically using your website for for their own for their own traffic. So you need to have some content that you can actually say is yours and that people can find and actually see your brand and see your site, as opposed to you know potential visitors just getting taken out elsewhere and then they never see you again. Bye bye. You know because. Yeah. Uh, that that's what might be happening uh, to to people who are searching for this stuff, and it's yeah, it's not good. And I saw <laughs> CBD cakes. Uh, good to see you uh, mentioning. So we we are brutal proper roasting, and I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's you know, it's it's one of those things. Like I, I don't want to to appear like I'm, you know, being all negative, but I th I think when it comes to these kind of things, when it comes to a, a site clinic, you have to be very very honest and i yeah, think someone if, has to be right because if you're if we're not honest and we tell you just what you want to hear then nothing's going to get done and your rankings won't improve and your site won't get better um so that's i think why that's really important so um cbd cakes thinks that maybe whoever owns the site if they're watching now hopefully you you feel like it's it's been helpful for you um as well as yeah. the, the affiliate site that we looked at before yeah, quite often we have people submitting the sites uh, to get this external point of view. That's the whole point of hiring a consultant. You want someone who's independent from any any you know employee relationship or you know boss or partners in a company where one partner does the sales and the other one is the web designer and then is responsible for something like that. Uh, and that's a tough call if you're in business for like a marriage for 20 years to, <laughs> to, to, to actually, you know, say it out loud that this is not a website for 2020. And I think what, what shocks me right now, I just, you know, with you found these, these interviews, these are golden. Uh, the first time I see faces connected to this website yeah. and the faces sell when we, when we look at a website, the first a thing you often see uh, is faces or testimonials or clients or logos. And what I noticed is when, uh, yes, I love art. Um, yeah, see, join our mailing list. This is how it works in 2020. You you have them all in your face. Maybe not, you know, overdo it, but that stuff works. Nobody's going to scroll down to your footer. Or was that the other side? Uh, metal? No, that was the grand street. No, it was the, uh, the art one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, but look here, here's tons of uh, gallery sites and their owners talking in interviews and each of them could have a, a feature page, you know, supported or partners or, or galleries or whatever. Or maybe there is even a URL galleries. I would hope so. Uh, well. No, it's not. Oops, page not found. See, uh, this is another door slammed closed uh, in front of their face, in front of the visitor's face. Because yeah, there obviously. is no way to search as well, is there? Like, there, there's no, no way for me from the home page. If I yeah. want to find galleries, I mean, okay, sure, you have categories, but these don't really, these are just like categories of types of arts or, or, or music. Um, tags. I mean, will, will somebody really spend time going through tags to try and find galleries, which they can't find anyway? Um, it's not going to be venues. It's not going to be yeah. organizers. So there's no way to search. And that's why I mentioned having some kind of navigation to this site at the top. It should be in the header of the yeah. website where you can look for, let's say, uh, events. Okay, sure. You've got events on the homepage, but galleries, interviews, um, 
even yeah. you know do some other stuff do some maybe podcast like turn it into a podcast if you want and then you know just all these other things that you can do to make the website look more complete because it just looks like it's you you know you're just whacking everything onto the home page in the hopes that people find what they're looking for which just it just doesn't work like that um mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah you I, know what i think uh i think what is this it's another type of calendar i think this website had an original website let's say uh is this a yeah an original wordpress website and someone uh said we need a proper calendar and then they signed up for this calendar tool here to put this on the front page and then they removed all the navigation to the old website because that would require you know someone to what is this calendar about is this still valid uh, are these the same events a uh, 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 Reynolds Open Jam. Uh, are these other events, or is this the same um, source, so to say? Because here I can even. Oh wait, what did I just do? I clicked on Art Museum of Myrtle Beach, and then it. Yeah, this is just. But you see, this is just the perfect example of somebody trying to access the site. And, you know, this is some of the stuff that they might do. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. if, they, if they end up losing their way, getting confused, you know, we're, they're not going to be like us trying to look more into the site. They'll just, they would have left. Yeah, exactly. Ago. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. And, um, yeah, we see these interviews here and they are put together in, um, uh, let's say, in a, a, some kind of list of posts and linda catron here i can see her videos uh but when i click on the website here this website link goes to an error page because you typed in the web addresses wrong you just typed in dub 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 class class mm -hmm. at polis and uh that's why a normal user will never find it and um you should have you should have this video on a on a separate page, Linda, mentioning Linda, having um, that video featured there. Maybe have a list of events for um, for what was the name of that place for the class? Um, oh my God, a class for the police classes at polis so all the events that you feature and the next one here is tomorrow with virginia brook should be listed on your side and then you make um this website the class website link back to you also find our events mentioned here or something like that uh, this you could see this as a link exchange but uh, if you agree with these guys that you list their events and they agree to link back to you so interested users could find other events of course they're creating some competition but come on it's the web uh, the competition is on the web anyways so but i can see someone having this concern oh no no we're not linking to another gallery because then they might go there and not to us but that's, <laughs> well that, it's that's already happening a lot isn't it though with other sites just <laughs> traffic going elsewhere yeah right? yeah, yeah i i think google coined that in 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 uh, what 15 years ago the competition is just a click away they used this in all the all the monopoly uh, lawsuits in all the um yeah the, the monopoly lawsuits in the eu um but that's that's how it works that's the web and so <laughs> at least you can you know show me this content and get some links from these guys that you interviewed and then someone will probably say oh yeah but this is so old Fif 15 yeah that's five years old this is so old we cannot show this why why can you not show us uh just go there and do an update of the interview for example or just write something like yeah we know this is five years old but we really like linda and so we kept it up and gonna whatever but hiding it here is not not cool, not not helpful. That's it. It's not helpful, I guess, uh, for you, for your website. And then you would get more links, I guess. Let's see where they're linked here, the Visit Myrtle Beach. Yeah, Visit Myrtle Beach is just linking to the homepage. And 
that's it. And of course, that's where you have the huge calendar that lists some events, but nothing about your brand, nothing mm -hmm. about the people you interviewed, nothing about your partners, nothing about the arts grand strand being the go-to site for events in Myrtle Beach. I, I, you actually some minutes ago thought that Myrtle Beach is not even related to this. I, I read yeah. it here in the title. <laughs> yeah, Myrtle Beach calendar of events. Things to do in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Nothing here. It doesn't even say Myrtle Beach here. Right. I think understanding that just makes me a bit sad. It's like, well, it's like, why? I think a homepage has to be about your brand and what you do and yeah. why the people are on this website to begin with. Yeah, like it's one hundred percent. Yeah, the, the the more time we spend here, the more we actually find all the hard work put into you know this website uh, in some hidden places, uh, just not being able to, to to find it. And yeah, with that, uh, I just realized uh, an hour is over already. You want to do a, a third site real quick? Oof, if it's quick, I can. If it's quick, but you I have can. A, you have your own show running in. A oh no, minutes. not today, not today. I've ah. moved that to be like a like a monthly thing, but it's just other ah. things that I had. had okay, but yeah, okay. we can try and we can do one more uh, okay. fairly quickly. Yeah. Oh, Troy is here with a small bathroom ideas. Funny. So, Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm Rice is the next one. Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm. All right, bear with me. Malcolm Royce, okie doke. So this one didn't have any kind of pain points listed in the beginning, uh, but this seems like an e-commerce site. So let me share my screen quick and we'll mm -hmm. have a look. Yeah, and a high risk. Malcolm Royce. Now, I don't know this brand, but it's apparently boys suits, tuxedos, girls baptism and christening gowns. Right, so this I will assume is for like children, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right, because I hope so. Otherwise, it should be men's. But okay, let's assume that this is actually um, for children. So free shipping and free returns, 100% no risk money back guarantee. Um, okay, that's. I think that's fine to have on there. It's not something that mm -hmm. strikes me. Because I don't know, you know, some people might read this and they might think like, like, hmm, like, th does that make people want to return their clue? If somebody sees, like, free returns? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. But that's okay. quite common. I think uh, some, some people, yeah. brands, like Zalando, started with that. and. Um, I think so. I think so. Especially maybe it's... in apparel. Yeah. Um, this this pop-up, not a big fan. I mean, no thanks. I'd rather pay full price. <laughs> That's brilliant. Honestly, that I've that, used that before. I've used that's it before. So funny. Yeah. But I, I think just having that to come up on the whole screen, I'm not a fan of, especially because you know you've got different things here and there, like the scroll up uh, and um I think you you've got a lot of calls to actions uh, above the fold, which sometimes can get a bit overwhelming. Um so Halloween sell. So use coupon spooky. I mean, Halloween's over. How long is that? Is are you still going to have the sell on? I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. That's a, I, that, that was my question too. Here is a because I got the the pop up here, the seven percent off now as well. And if you use the spooky one, bro, products and card. Yeah, they've just got a lot of things popping up, and I mean, I don't like. I, I'd be personally annoyed if I'm like, okay, maybe let's use this site to try and save another twenty percent. Then they go and then they type in spooky, and if that's expired, they're gonna just abandon cart and never come back to your website, like literally. Yeah. Um, so this, okay, so interestingly, you've got the the physical address here. Um, obviously, making sure that that's consistent. If that is the case. Uh, for example, on your Google My Business listing, if you've got one um, and things like that. But yeah, I think usually what you want to do for the, an above the fold on an e-commerce site is is have something about maybe the, the kind of best selling types of products as well. And I see, obviously, you've got this 
Halloween cell on this side. Underneath, you've got it kind of flipped to, is this, what? what is this? Are these beaches? Uh, oh, okay. So is this just a bunch of different locations? Um, I mean, I wow. okay. I don't feel like people are going to read this, if I'm honest. I feel like for, you've got, obviously, the menu tabs at the top, and um, that's probably what people are going to look for. I feel like if you're not going to have more than this, I would center this because the font size is quite small and it just looks like it's just leaning too much to the left and then you've got the ability to change the currency. I would have that actually just mm -hmm. in centered. It would look nicer. Um, probably the same thing with your logo uh, as well, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, but let's go into a product page because that's what we like to do with e-commerce sites. Oh, I tried the coupon already. I tried a coupon already, and it says it works. Uh, okay. My, my, my final step would be to actually put in the credit card to find out that it not works. So, but at least <laughs> I, I I could screenshot and say you gave me the discount here. Shipping calculated next step. So looks like they they keep this open. Uh, yeah, I think this is something. This is something, and just on another point, it, it keeps popping up with like this person bought this product two hours ago, like come on, like no one's going to be like, oh, I need to buy this product because this random person just bought it two hours ago. And it's like toddler's white knickers outfit. And it's like, what if you don't have a toddler and you've just got like a, a six-year-old kid? Yeah. Do, you, do you know what I mean? It's like, you don't really need that. It's just quite annoying because it just comes up and it's like every 10 seconds. Like now, uh, Nikki in Hayward, United States, like, do these people know that you're giving out this information? Mm -hmm. I hope mm -hmm. not. Uh, because that, I mean, you know, you're in the States. I don't know how GDPR is and all that kind of stuff, but I don't think it's a good idea telling other people, like people have bought these products. It's just, I mean, this is every 10 seconds. That's really irritated me. Yeah. It's creepy. It's creepy uh, for it's uh, creepy. European. Yeah. Uh, but onto these, uh, uh, and to the point you mentioned, Christoph, as well, with the, the coupon codes, you need to tell people when it expires. Uh, because if you don't, people are just going to assume that it works and then you might end up having people uh, angry at you mm -hmm. and leaving bad reviews. And this is interesting. Is this five stars or zero stars? Is that, I'd assume that's zero stars. Uh, oh, okay. That's all right. So that's for this product. I thought I was on the homepage for a second. I was like, wait, what? It's like, why is that like that? Um, but okay. So these product pages, you've got multiple images, which is good. It's good to see. Uh, is this the only difference to, why is this looking like, okay. Oh, okay, so you just had a close-up. Uh, you could have shown what it looks like maybe from the back, potentially. That mm -hmm. Some people might want to see that, even like a rotating thing, 360 view. So you've got the different size guides in there. That's fine. You've got a description there, which is fine. Um, but the review... Why is there a phone number in the product description? Or what, what's that about? Oh, okay, cool. Call 904? Is that and the same I will phone help number? in any way. Or visit. Maybe they just have that for every single product, uh, which is a bit weird. I would say. I, I mean, why would so why would someone necessarily? Why would you tell somebody to call them call you for help when they've got like a size guide and they're on a product page and they've got the sizes and they've got the products? Like, is that necessary? Probably not. I mean, you've already got the call or message us at the top. So if they wanted you to do that anyway, they could. Um, so that's a bit strange. I hope that's not in all the products let's look at uh this and go on to this um oh so this one doesn't interesting so so apparently people can call you if they have problems for that one but not this one i mean what's what's the difference you know it's yeah. like consistency yeah. is really important with this stuff um it's so all over pinterest that's the, the that's the, the point these things are shared on Pinterest, and that's why they probably put the, the call to action with the phone number and the address into the description. Because mm -hmm. when you go to Pinterest pages and you see this all boy suits, then you see their contact information. I think that's the, the, the idea here. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. I, 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 I think as well, now that I'm looking at this, this search box is absolutely massive. Like, if I type christening and baptism, white gown, Bonnie. I mean, I've still got to type that another four, three times to fill mm. up this whole box. You don't need that. You could condense this a lot more, I think, especially because it's being used as the header for 
mm -hmm. for your for your site and i mean th what's the difference between this you've got the menus up here why do you need this here as well why oh, isn't that a detail menu? I, I didn't drive No, it. I think it's the same because accessories, there's drop downs if you hover over long enough. Oh. Um, and it just appears to be the same thing. I mean, have one or the other. Um, oh. You don't need to have that twice. Yeah. And then the search thing, you could have literally had. Like, do you know what you should do? Have the logo up at the top here, have underneath it the different uh, menu bits for the categories have them centered and then you've at least got an option on the right potentially to search uh maybe near to the to the to the currency and i think you've saved yourself easily like so much space like an inch of space um on the on the home screen as well and then people can see more of this kind of stuff because this is description about your brand if they see that above the fold that's great um but Interestingly, I mean, yeah, that's kind of main things I would say in terms of just looking at like the product pages and the way that you've laid out your information. There's definitely things you can do. Um, I'll just really quickly, uh, maybe Christoph, if we can look together at the um, at the links to the site because it's always yeah, interesting let's, seeing what. Let's let's, let's do that. Uh, here we got uh, two thousand, almost three thousand detox risk, and there are some negative SEO links, but a large number, 463 links with very high risk found, which could be part of some scraper patterns. Mm -hmm. um, I would just disavow them right now. Um, I, I keep saying this in every site clinic we do, that um, if you have uh, something disavowed and it's part of some patterns, we then right after right now we run checks if one or two of those links are actually good and sometimes out of a couple hundred that trip one of those very aggressive filters uh we we come back and say hey here's three links that look actually okay you might want to undisavow them but that's roughly the the, the, the relation it's one to 500 usually or one to to, to 400 where we sometimes uh, see some links that you should look at again and then sometimes there are actually really good links where you you know help improve the system then uh, can help improve the system by retraining our machine learning but uh, in general the bulk of those that we find uh, here in these issues uh, you can get rid of and what we just saw with the previous site we see here again most popular link text is a dot and these dots are part of uh, um, image scrapers and you can uh, equal dots apply you can disavow what's that uh 206 pages 206 source pages or 248 links uh we do this by the root domain level because these are all trash uh <laughs> scraper sites nobody wants a link from there and if you would get a notice so if you have this set up uh as a project in link research tools and you would have this about something on an actually good site, we would tell you, hey, here's a link that you this about, take a look again. But I don't see this popping up here. Usually it pops up after a couple minutes already and we haven't uploaded anything to Google Search Console yet. So mm -hmm. this is just the, the, the lab if you want. Um, when we look at the link profile again by Power Trust, and this is what I see with a lot of sites here. Look at that. Um, 96 97 percent of the websites have zero power trust they are not helping you so if reverse that means you only have what's that uh uh three percent of your backlinks are actually good um to keep and that's the problem uh which you know is just natural for websites that haven't done uh good content and link campaign for a while, which this looks like a little bit. Now, when we look at the anchor text here uh, by Detox Risk, we see dub, 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 the Bayer Foundation, more at the Bayer Foundation. And then we see a URL, the pursuit of mumminess. And what that indicates is that you actually have some domains redirecting. Yes, this is what we just see here. Uh, you have some other domains redirecting. And 
the good news is we we find this here you probably you, you may know this already uh you should know this already this should be your domains redirected a uh, possible negative seo tag would be to take domains that have a penalty and redirect it to you you could inherit the penalty from that and then drop in rankings if these are your domains all you need to do is just do a link audit for them as well all of those domains pass over link power but possibly also link risk and that is something that a lot of people are not aware this also changed in penguin 2.1 i think um where google uh, changed not just linking power and risk passing over but then they also did this for redirects so that was about a year no it was penguin 2.0 it was about a year after the initial penguin algorithms launched and that means um all of these domains here forever formal and uh, pietro's tuxedo pietro's tuxedo they are potentially helping you for this category here um but they're also potentially hurting you and this is what we need to to do at least once yeah um, be aware if you have redirecting domains we recommend to set them up as separate projects here as well and take a look every now and then at the domain risk so let's say you have the tuxedo site that we just saw redirecting the pietos tuxedo redirecting to malcolm royce first we need to clean up the tuxedo site but then we need to monitor it because if I'm your competitor and I'm nasty and I'm doing negative SEO, I'm not even doing this to Malcolm Royce. I'm doing this to the domains that you redirect. Each of your redirecting domains is a negative attack vector. And believe me, we had uh, 160 or 150 uh, link research tools dot something domains that we just stopped redirecting because of that uh, before we had this. You know, in the past, that was a big hassle. Now you would just set them all up so that we can spot some problems on the specific domains. Um, this is what you buy. What This is what you get as a side effect of this uh, redirecting um, mm -hmm. trick. Yeah. Uh, however, redirecting expired domains, for example, is a very uh, uh, um, popular and, and still very helpful seo tactic so that is not something that is bad in itself it's just if you redirect spammy if you redirect toxic links you have toxic links on your <laughs> target site and that's not good and so um, we have some some guidelines and an ebook out uh, about building pbns where first step before actually setting them up is to do a link audit, to do a link detox on them. And so this is something that maybe you need to do in hindsight, because who knows, these domains might be this uh, might be redirecting for um, years, for many years, mm -hmm. and you might have forgotten about it. But this is what I see here as well. And that's uh, a quite a generic problem that we see with a lot of clients. Um, then, yeah, simple wall art drawings, wall decor, um, wait, that was the other side, the art side. This is Malcolm Royce. So I'm wondering what these type of um, links are for, <laughs> but, but, but probably not good. Not probably good. not good. I think though it's important the the point you're making about uh, when you've got these redirecting domains, especially if you're not doing active link building yourself, which I don't think this website is doing. Um, because that's the other uh, part of it as well, especially if you're not generating good links and the only thing you're getting is potential spam, then, yeah. you know, what if, what's Google got to work with here? You know, they're just yeah. seeing the negative stuff. Um, so that's on you as a site owner to kind of say, okay, well, we need to, to A, like a two-step two, two step process, A, uh, detox these uh, bad links, get rid of them, um, keep the ones you need to, but then build uh, more ones, uh, more stronger ones, that will help you more in the long term because that's the only way that you're going to uh, future proof your site is by is by cleaning up your yeah. backlink profile and, and making sure that Google sees it as reputable and authoritative. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then when we look at all these links, you know, 570 links go to 320 pages that are 404s now. Lots of product pages have links. Lots. Look at that. 
media, some some medias. These are probably from scrapers, but uh, there are tons of others here that did go to the site. And uh, th this is an audit by itself to find out, you know, what type of links uh, do we have that go to error pages. And uh, we already have a warning here that at least 23 of them are high risk. So you don't fix your site yet. First, get rid of disavow these 23 high risk links and then fix your site. Because again, if you have these toxic links coming in, the 404s, make them uh, neutralize them. If you redirect them suddenly, then you have new toxic links. That's not what you want. So, yeah. And with that, I think we should call it a day. It's been uh, 90 minutes. <laughs> very, very uh, pleasant to work with you. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Itama. It has been joy for me to have you in the LRT <laughs> site clinic. Something uh, that we had asking for a while here from Elliot. How do I submit my site? Is uh, you just go to LRTAT slash site clinic. So let me just uh, post that link as well here. I should have posted this a lot earlier, maybe. But this is where you just sign up for the free site clinic. And then you get an email with a second form where you get questions about your site and your search console and your keywords and, you know, some detailed data that we need, your pain points. And of course, if you tell us your pain points, it's more helpful for us. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that was that was really fun. Um, I, I hope uh, you guys who watched it, even if the site wasn't yours, what we looked at, if you found it, useful found some actionable things that you can kind of take a look at your own website and and have a think about um but yeah it was great fun uh, christoph so thanks so much for having me um my pleasure and uh yeah thanks everyone for watching either live or then in the replay so we of course answer your questions if you have some after the replay as well just comment on the on the youtube channel for example or send us an email and uh, Itama is online every day anyways, you know, so <laughs> those guys that, that are easy to reach. <laughs> it's true. The lockdown number two has just started today. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> lots of time. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a nice evening. Thank you, Itama. Has Cheers. been a pleasure. Bye-bye.